Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a sci-fi, drama, thriller film from 2017, titled The Circle. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. May Holland is on a kayak in the middle of a lake. Her phone rings but she ignores it and continues what seems to be her favorite hobby. We are then introduced to her typical day of work at a water company, answering calls of angry customers. Her exhausting day is far from being over as her car breaks on her way back home. She calls her friend Mercer, who is a handy guy, helping her fix her car. Despite his successful job at fixing the car, his attempt of inviting May for a dinner that night turns out to be a failure. Once home, May is having dinner with her parents who are pretty fond of Mercer and definitely not shy to suggest that they should be a couple. Much to their dismay, May is not welcoming the idea. Another aspect of May's family is shown during this dinner, May's dad has multiple sclerosis and it is not covered by insurance. Another day, another opportunity, a saying that was pretty literal for May, as in the midst of yet another hectic day, she got a call from her friend Annie, saying that the company she's working for is hiring up to a hundred people and that May should take the interview the next day. Ex Hermione was delighted to hear the news and so she excitedly headed to the circle the following day for the interview. Your typical interview? Not really. But May was able to make it through and is now part of the Circle customer experience team. Annie then introduces May to the many facilities the company has, from headquarters of different departments to leisure and sports. May is pretty surprised, but just then, before she could elaborately express her thoughts, her extremely busy friend leaves her in the hands of the customer experience unit head. May is shown a demonstration of how to deal with customers and the metrics used to rate her performance. May was hoping to get her score above 90 but Annie reassured that her 87 score was satisfactory for the first week. The reassurance sunk in as the friends got seated at the Circle Conference Dream Friday. It is hosted by Bailey, a laid-back CEO making jokes here and there, while introducing the company's latest innovation Sea change Sea changes cameras as small as a coin and that can be implemented anywhere without being noticed. The moral motive behind this, according to Bailey, is tracking wrongdoers and holding them accountable in order to make a change in the community. This announcement is followed by a party featuring the artist Beck. Annie then takes May to a somehow secret place where she makes her say a verbal non-disclosure statement, as what goes on there is extremely confidential being the place where the magic happens. Annie has to rush to catch a flight to Australia, too much for business trips if you ask me. May is then left alone. She makes her way back to the party and tries to start a conversation with who she assumed to be a fellow employee. The man was busy on his phone, still he welcomed the conversation with May. Since she seemed excited about her new position he guessed that she was a newbie or one of the guppies, as Bailey liked to call them. He strangely told her, with a hint of sarcasm, to keep on that excitement as he left for an urgent matter. May spent the weekend at a certain gathering with her parents who are proud of her for making it to the greatest company of the country. They're still trying to pimp her up with Mercer but May isn't so fond of the idea and she goes as far as saying some hurtful words to him, degrading to some extent. Once back at the table with her parents, her dad has an episode and her mom escorts him back inside. Feeling overwhelmed, May goes kayaking as she lets her sorrows roll down her cheeks in the form of tears. A new week for May at the Circle and as she is watching the news coverage about the senator questioning the Circle's true intentions, she is interrupted by two of her co-workers. They try to make her feel guilty about not attending some gatherings and activities during the weekends and seek personal information that they note down on their tablets. They were building a profile of May and wanted to know everything about her. They seem to know about her father's MS that she hasn't mentioned before and went on as far as telling her to catch up with the 8000 group messages. The exchange was an explicit privacy violation sugarcoated by the purpose of enhancing the sense of community. May is left in disbelief but she still does her best to boost her efforts and she finally achieves a perfect score. She has a brief call with her mom that updates her on her father's health. May feels sorry that she's not there for them as she stays at the dorm to keep up with her work. During the video call. She notices her friend's Mercer's latest work, a pretty chandelier that she shares on the Circle community group. Busy Annie is back and she introduces May to Dr. Jessica who performs her medical intake that is none other than daily data stored on the company's cloud and available via the employee's tablets. The doctor offers to get May's parents on their health plan which takes May over the moon as it is an opportunity to save her father. Next up is a conference by Tom, Bailey's associate, and hosting a senator candidate who advocates accountability through data sharing via the True You page. Another after-party calls for another unusual talk. This time with an employee who works in iris scanning and tracking, boasting about how they can save children from predators with their technology. May is amazed until she is told that it is not through a worn bracelet but a chip implemented in the bone. 
While May is trying to make sense of what she heard she spots the same guy from last time, busy on his phone once again. When she walks up the stairs to greet him he shoves his phone in his pocket and after they exchange a few words he suggests showing her something to which she complies and heads downstairs. Upon introducing her to where the data is stored the guy reveals his identity as Ty Lafitte, creator of True You. He doesn't approve of monetizing personal data and discarding privacy. May is shocked but she accepts to keep this encounter a secret. The next day May has a visitor, Mercer, who has been receiving death threats for being a deer killer upon the picture that May shared with the group. Upset, May trespasses to get the kayak at night and goes into an agitated bay. She is knocked off her kayak and is holding on for dear life, when a helicopter and rescuer save her. According to them, it was thanks to the sea change cameras that she was spotted and saved. What follows is an interview held by Bailey where May talks about how frightening her experience was and that it was thanks to the sea change cameras that she was saved. Then through a smart manipulative speech Bailey comes to the conclusion that everything should be shared, it is selfish not to share, and that secrets are lies. May Holland is the first subject to have a portable sea change camera 24-7. Within the ecstatic crowds applauding his initiative we notice a very distraught Annie, unlike her previous enthusiastic self and also a disappointed Ty. And so May is being watched from waking up in the morning and doing her most basic hygiene routine up to making calls with her parents, and her day at work. She is in her third week of transparency with 2.3 million viewers currently watching. When she's back at her dorm room she checks on her folks through their camera and catches them being intimate, for the whole world to see. May is embarrassed but tries to brush it off. She tries checking on them again but their cameras are disconnected. The following day, on her way around campus, May spots Annie but the latter avoids her and keeps walking till May calls her by her full name. May has three minutes off of video for bathroom usage and that's where she gets to have a private talk with Haggard Annie who tells May that she's way deep in, and there are things she doesn't realize. During a meeting about vote registration, May suggests taking it up a notch and make it mandatory for everyone to vote through Circle, for ideally democratic countries where everybody's voice is heard. Annie tries to knock sense into her during the meeting but to no avail. On the other hand, the idea of glorifying the circle through this initiative is more than welcomed by Bailey. May is then given the spotlight as she announces during a conference that her idea is now possible as 22 countries have agreed to it. During the same conference, she introduces Soul Search, a way to find anyone anytime, under 20 minutes. And so she gives a demo by looking for a fugitive that ends up being found through the eyes of the billions of people using the circle. That only fuels the exhilarating crowd who wants more and is now suggesting Mercer. May declines the shouting crowd's demands but Bailey steps in and forces her to do it. Ty is watching the full conference. Mercer is found by strangers around the forest, they try to barge in his house while calling him a deer killer. Mercer manages to get in his car but they go as far as following him. The pursuit ends tragically with Mercer drifting off the bridge down a ravine and dying. May is grieving back at her parents' home for four days. She calls Annie who's in Scotland, she tries to convince her to back off the circle, especially after what happened, but May seems brainwashed and doesn't hold the circle accountable, and still believes that the services can be improved to avoid such accidents. On her way back to work, she calls Ty. May declines Bailey and Tom's suggestion of taking another position with a more flexible schedule like Ty Lafitte, and she just enforces the fact that a fund should be set for Mercer's family. Ty calls May and they meet underground by the cloud storage. He tells May that he did what she instructed and that he discovered so many things way more dangerous than he thought and that Mercer's death could be a game changer. May nods and heads back to the conference hosted by Bailey. May joins the discussion and calls Tom to join the stage as well. She goes on about how Mercer could have been still alive if they had never lost contact to begin with, through accessible locating and information anywhere anytime. She then holds up two sea change cameras and turns to Bailey and Tom asking them to be fully transparent as well. The men are taken aback but it only gets worse for them as May discloses their personal files, secret ones and even encrypted ones and sends them to the crowds. That marks the ends of the two as May rises to be the new leader for a better circle. The last scene is May kayaking on the bay with a couple of drones hovering over her. The image then zooms out to reveal hundreds of video shots from different countries and different people. That's quite the ending that leaves unanswered questions, was May in it with Ty all along trying to throw Bailey off? What changes will May make to the circle? Will privacy be forever lost? The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.